through the mists comes forth RPG a day in the year 2021 RPG a day comes back for its eighth year a time in August when every day we tackle another question or topic by answering in a way that uplifts the gaming community and answers questions people might have about this crazy hobby of ours that serves to build the community and bring it up that many of us make blogs about, video blogs, art, or great works. In celebration of the community of gamers, I welcome you to RPG A Day 2021. Hello friends, I am Rob the Dungeon Tutor. Sometimes Omnisai as well. But, <clears throat> I'm here today for RPG A Day 2021. In this, the 21st day of August, which is the 21st day of RPG A Day. The word for today is simplicity. Now, I kind of stand on a threshold between old school gaming and modern gaming. So, I can appreciate with my perspective how things have changed in terms of you know, rules and simplicity, quite honestly. Back in the day, things seemed really simple. The original Dungeons & Dragons was based off of a war game, which meant you have charts and tables, and you've played war games before to have encountered it, so you're familiar with the charts and tables that you would use for combat. Your characters were relatively simple. They were a playing piece that you moved around, uh, your avatar, as it were, and because this is a war game, you're facing usually multiple opponents, so you're using your tactics, and you're using your character's strengths to show, attack your opponent's weaknesses, and trying to see through the battle, sometimes sacrificing a piece here and there, but you're just attempting to win. So instead of your team of pikemen going up against the, the oncoming cavalry and archers, Instead, you're going with your warrior and your wizard up against this horde of goblins and then against this troll. So, in the interests of that, it was a similar. You know, you had uh, a, a on purpose. You were going to have a small group going up against you know more and more difficult opponents, and they would advance and and gain access to new powers and abilities. And later on, that of course got more polished in terms of what they eventually published as Dungeons and Dragons, where your characters would go up by levels and your wizards would get access to more spells that had these effects and your, your fighter would have the ability to take more punishment and hopefully find better weapons and armor. And then eventually they expanded out. Okay, now we have thieves because traps are a thing that game masters like to use. So we want somebody who's good at dealing with those. And that can be a bit of a chess match and so on and so forth. It actually started to spin out to become more complex from what was relatively simple. And eventually the war game transformed into a role-playing game as we understand them today. Uh, probably best celebrated once you got away from Chainmail into Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or the basic expert sets that came out too. And that left behind a lot of the props of the wargaming side. And now we're interested in the characters a lot more. Okay, so your characters have different job titles now. And there's elements of examples in play where your character is actually being portrayed as a person. And you are sometimes speaking as that character or in a person who is very personally interested in their survival as kind of the narrator of their actions. It still was kind of a, a transitive period, but you, you were making the game more complicated in that there were more choices, more options and things. 
But as far as the mechanics went, it was still looking at charts. It was still, you know, you had a, a matrix and you would cross-reference a result and see if you did well. And then there was a quick result for, for damage, for instance. At the same time this was going through its development, you had games like Tunnels and Trolls that were rolling a bunch of six-sided dice depending on stacking up the best armors and weapons that you could get. The weapons would give you more dice. The armor would allow you, if you didn't roll high enough to beat the monster, to absorb the damage that you would take. And that was its own kind of a, a chess match about trying to optimize your characters to output as much damage as possible and absorb things when things didn't go out so well for you. And, you know, that worked pretty well, too. Um, you know, that's certainly been a long-lived game, too, ever since Ken San Andre came up with that. So, <clears throat> different games had their own elements and evolved. Now, oftentimes, in those early days, that's when you started to see the really complicated games start to come out. You saw Roll Master and Rune Quest. They were a bit more challenging than uh, certainly uh, basic Dungeons and Dragons was. Uh, on purpose, they were for people who wanted to be able to simulate more accurately the ins and outs of a character, what they could do, what they knew, and you know their day-to-day -day life which sometimes could get to ludicrous levels. There were some games that certainly got far more complicated, almost to the point of toxic complication. The banner holder for that, I guess, would be a game like Fatal, where you actually had to do quadratic equations to come out with statistics, which simplicity would have made just easier. But just people who were kind of jerking their own chain and trying to make it as complicated and, and realistic as possible. But we have kind of seen, in modern days, a lot of people don't want that. Complication gets in the way of their imaginations, their, their narratives, their storytelling, their ability to just enjoy the game. So as a result, as a natural evolution, simplicity has become a hallmark of a lot of modern games. Not saying all of them, there are still some games with, with varying levels of complexity. But simplicity is usually the argument that I pitch for when somebody tells me I've got this new game I want to run or I want to create. It's like, okay, how complicated is it? And if it hits a certain point, I'll be the first person to say, okay, you might want to tone it back. Modern audiences aren't interested in this level of complexity unless you have something really concrete to gain from it. I've said this before in these RPG A Day videos, but in engineering principles, a work isn't done when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. And quite honestly, bloated, overly complicated rules are a turnoff to your modern gamer. And generally, and this is again generally, because I know there are some people who like crunchy rules. I know there are some people who like a lot of complications and accurately being able to uh, display uh, levels of success and, and, and failure and portray all of that to the, to the players. But in general, games that are simpler seem to have taken a turn as the more successful games. Dungeons & Dragons, for instance, ever since 3rd edition, got simpler, reducing everything to basic math, getting rid of tables and charts except for, you know, useful points of reference for things like leveling up. And then, as we get into 5th edition, you barely have to reference a table or a chart. It's all simple math. Predictable, straightforward, and keep the numbers low so that the players will rarely ever have to keep track of a number that gets higher than 25. That's by intent, and it works pretty well as a result. Uh, you didn't need terrible amounts of complexity to make this game make sense. Um, and other games, like Powered by the Apocalypse games, all generally feature a banner point of simplicity to make them work. It's not about making you know horribly complicated rules to simulate. Your game master can do a fine job of interpreting a role and flavoring it out, and all your players need is the diversity to make a kind of character that they can come to grips with and play well. And they're generally going to be happy. Uh, so those kind of games seem to really work well. A game like Fate. 
that intentionally is very vague and very broad and allows you to interpret and kind of argue your point on circum certain circumstances and situations. Well, there's a lot of people who like that kind of thing. And, you know, games that sometimes have the veneer of complexity, like um, it came from the Late 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 Show, which I know a lot of you haven't played, but it's a fairly simple, straightforward, percentile-based game system where all of your statistics are based on a percentage you roll, and most of the time, if you roll under your number, you succeed, and if you roll higher, you fail. And sometimes there are some modifiers, but more often than not, you just do the thing. It's very simple, very straightforward, very appealing to a person who just wants to play the game and not have to worry about remembering complicated rules or figuring out where this exception comes in or tracking this effect and this effect and this effect, which sometimes Dungeons and Dragons, even in its fifth edition, can be guilty of uh, timers and cooldowns and effects. So, um, but generally, yes, if somebody is making a new game, I often will counsel for simplicity. Um, making a, a very, very complicated system these days just doesn't seem like it works well and doesn't resonate with modern players. Uh, especially since so few of them are willing to step out and away from common grounds of something like 5th edition D&D. &D. Uh, attracting somebody with a shiny new game, if it is overly complicated, is a lot more challenging than doing something that is relatively simple and can sell itself on. You just play and the game system just works because it's simple and it's easy and it's flexible. So simplicity is a virtue in role-playing games, I find. Although, I will say this, if you like having realism, if you like having a system that does accurately track or requires good tactics, there's still a place for that. I'm not going to say that a complicated game can't do well. Ones with a lot of crunch can and still do succeed. It just takes a little bit more selling to get the casual person to come in and try your game out. So... There is still a hardcore group out there who still loves the complicated games, but simplicity can serve you well if you are a game designer or a game publisher. So, And if you, yourself, are a player and you've never really thought about, you know, how complicated do I like it, it's a good thing to look into. And if you're really not being challenged by the game you're playing and you don't think it's all that... Uh, gripping as a result, and you'd like more complexity, there's certainly games out there that can do that. So, all, all the way up to, again, requiring you to do equations and things to figure out how you succeed and how well you do. Although I don't recommend Fatal for anybody. Um, but there are other games that are rather complicated that do uh, enjoy a, a fairly high level of crunch that can still be a lot of fun. And games like Rule Master can be fun like that, too. Um, the old Iron Crown Enterprises games, uh, you know, Adventures in Middle Earth, um, and Rollmaster are, are great games on their own. Um, but again, more complicated than a lot of people these days would do. And if you launch Rollmaster for the first time in the year 2021, I don't think it would do very well, quite honestly. It would have a niche audience, perhaps, but it would be a, it would be a tough slug. Anyhow, thank you for joining me. I'm Rob. This is my thoughts on simplicity and role-playing games. Uh, you can find me at Dungeon Tutor or Omnisci, either on Facebook, uh, online, on YouTube. I uh, thank you for joining me. If you have any thoughts to yourself on simplicity, or if you think I was overly simplistic in my uh, treatise on simplicity, feel free to leave that in the comments below. Uh, I hope you did like this video, and if so, leaving a like would be much appreciated. Uh, subscribing, if you're not subscri subscribed, is great. Um, Thank you in advance if you do, or if you are a subscriber, I appreciate you. And uh, I hope to see you for the next video, because there's still more to come, an RPG a day and beyond. So, thank you again. I am Rob, and I'll wish you very fond. Farewell.